That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is everybody ready? That's a yes. <laughs> well, we're happy to ha have everyone here today to announce the, the great progress that is being made in providing broadband internet to all the people of South Carolina. Uh, this is an effort uh, that we have realized was vital to our future, to the prosperity of all of our people. Uh, we know that in the, in the urban areas, it's a lot easier to get the internet service, to get broadband, to get fast internet service. But the rural areas are loaded with talent and opportunity. And we determined some years ago that it was vital to our future to see that everyone had access to this service can be used for education, for health, for, edu for everything in between, prosperity, looking for jobs, doing work from home, taking care of your children, all kinds of vital things for the future and comfort of, of our people. So one of the leaders in this effort for years has been Congressman Jim Clyburn, and we're delighted to have him here today. He has been a constant warrior to see that these opportunities are expanded to include everyone in our great state because, because we know that our, our people, we have terrific people. What we have to do is provide them all with safety, health, and education, and there'll be no stopping South Carolina. Congressman Clyburn. Thank you very much, Governor, and thank you so much for this partnership that we have undertaken to make uh, what I consider to be one of the great innovations of this country, accessible and affordable for all of its citizens. I often say that this is a great country. Our challenge is making this country's greatness accessible and affordable for all of its citizens. Uh, and I can think of no uh, other way to demonstrate that than to bring all of our children into the world. Um, as many of you know, I chair uh, the uh, Congress's response to the coronavirus, the select subcommittee that oversees the expenditures. And um, back when we were putting together the recovery package, uh, we began to argue uh, that as we try to figure out how uh, to come back uh, from the pandemic, uh, we needed to really correct some faults that had uh, opened up uh, because of COVID-19. And one of those fault lines that opened up uh, had to do with the education of our children. I saw my grandchildren uh, in school clothes, get online, stayed in touch with education, and they were fine when schools reopened. But their classmates were not fine. Some of them lost a year of school because they could not pass the proficiency exams that they were given to determine whether or not they could go on to the next grade. That should not be. Uh, and um, from in the middle of the pandemic, uh, the governor and I started talking first about getting mobile units out so that uh, people could get tested uh, throughout rural South Carolina. And that morphed into what we could do. Uh, and here we are, uh, we decided on the internet. And I want to thank the governor for doing something uh, that um, a lot of uh, uh, people with less vision uh, did not do. He looked at the Rescue Act, and he saw in that Rescue Act uh, what we uh, were able to put in there with the assistance uh, of Director Edwards. And I think Jim, I'm going to call him Jim because I have real problems with Strickland or whatever, uh, however you pronounce his last name. Uh, these two people uh, worked very closely with us. Jim came up to Washington, sat down in my conference room with Congress people from our out all the way up to Rhode Island, 
and became the go-to guy in helping them with their mapping. South Carolina has created a model that other states are now following. And I want to thank them uh, for their tremendous uh, contribution to all of this. Now, we are on the road to building out South Carolina, totally building out our state. Every resident, every business, uh, I think the governor says in three to five years, we're going to be able to do that. Why? Because we are able now to secure the $600 million in public funds that uh, we were told would be needed. $400 million in the rescue plan, $100 million from the bipartisan infrastructure bill, another $100 million from the Federal Communications Commission uh, in its um, auctions, and another $40 million uh, that the legislature put up. Uh, and we are going to be where we need to be to get that done. So I want to thank the governor for uh, doing that. That $400 million of the rescue plan, that was his decision to use for broadband. He could have used it for something else. Uh, and would have been legit, uh, legitimate so. Other people are using it for other things. But he is using it for broadband so that our children uh, can get connected to the rest of the world so that we can have telemedicine, telehealth, uh, which is very, very important. As many of you know, uh, my late wife lost a 30-year battle to that diabetes, and I saw what telemedicine meant to her. She had to do her peritoneal overnight. She couldn't do it. She... Her body would not accept what was going on in dialysis centers, and so she couldn't do that. She had to be at home. And so this is what this is all about. So when it comes to education, comes to health, whatever it is, broadband will make all these things accessible and affordable. And I'll close with this. We didn't stop with just making it accessible. I just told you about uh, the monies that we were putting up to get it done. We also put in the infrastructure bill, monies to make it affordable. Not just accessible, but affordable. So every South Carolinian will have access and affordability. And I want to now yield to Director Edwards and thank her once again for her tremendous visionary leadership. Thank you, Congressman Clyburn, and uh, thank you, Governor McMaster. Well, our story really begins on July 1, 2021, because that's when the South Carolina Office of Regulatory Staff became the home of the South Carolina Broadband Office. And that would not have been possible without Governor McMaster, um, the South Carolina General Assembly, and the Public Utilities Review Committee. Um, once we had a broadband office, and that came after, as Congressman Clyburn described, you know, after the pandemic, um, the General Assembly, the governor, we need a broadband office. And after a year of um, working very hard, that office opened July 1. And fortunately, Jim, um, Director Strichinger, had uh, joined us in March of 2021 to start working with us on broadband and telecommunications. So July 1, he became the director. And he was a, really an office of one at that time. Um, but we then quickly turned to the next challenge, which was um, hiring technical um, folks from, we did a nationwide search, and we found a 20-year uh, specialist in GIS mapping. Uh, we then uh, turned around and uh, hired a senior data scientist uh, from win within South Carolina state government a veteran within South Carolina state government. And so today, as I stand here now, we have a broadband office of six full-time employees that is supported uh, by the Office of Regulatory Staff. Um, and I have to tell you, they are very passionate about their work. Um, these six employees, um, they give it their all. Um, and with that, uh, we now have, um, and Jim is going to describe for you, the mapping, which is really state-of-the-art mapping. It's very detailed. It's very complex. Um, in that first year alone, that uh, small office uh, mapped the state of South Carolina not once, not twice, but three times. Three times, and I, I would be remiss 
if I didn't say thank you to the internet service providers, uh, the state agencies that we work with, and the Broadband Advisory Council. Um, it takes all of that and the residents and the businesses, the community stakeholder groups that, that Jim interacts with. Um, so our office, the broadband office, models, maps, and then plans so that we are using these scarce dollars most efficiently. We only want to put infrastructure where it needs to go, which is where there isn't currently access or an area that is underserved. Um, we have a, a broadband website. It's called SC Digital Drive, and Jim's going to talk more about that. But if you go to that website, you can find a repository of all the maps, uh, even broken down to the county level, so that you can see what is served and unserved. We also launched an interactive tool, tool called the I Need Internet Survey, and I do want to take a moment and, and talk about that. So any South Carolinian can fill out this interactive um, tool survey that allows the office to know that that consumer, that customer, does not currently have access to the internet. And that automatically allows the internet service providers to see, oh yes, I see a neighborhood or I see um, a rural area where there are several consumers that are raising their hand saying, I need internet. And that tool has been fantastic. We even have had situations where um, the, cons the customers are able to get service without the need of any state financial support and as access has already been built out or is being built out by the internet service providers. So as I mentioned, Jim's going to give you more details about the grant programs that we've completed as well as the ones that we are currently in, in, in progress. I just want to say in closing, um, the mission of the broadband office is to achieve universal or near universal broadband access. But we can't do it alone. We, to be successful, we have to have the support of the internet service providers who are actually the ones doing the work, the other state agencies, GIS professionals, the Broadband Advisory Council, community-based organizations, nonprofits, and of course, our own uh, residents and businesses. It's through that stakeholder engagement that we'll be able to be successful. Um, finally, I just am deeply grateful for the support and the confidence that we have from Congressman Clyburn and our Cong congressional delegation, Governor McMaster, the General Assembly, and the Public Utilities Review Committee. Um, Jim, I now invite you to provide an update. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Jim Stritzer. I'm the director of the South Carolina Broadband Office. Um, Governor, Congressman, uh, Director Edwards, um, I thank you all for allowing me to have my dream job. Um, quite literally, doing what I do is, is, is just fabulous, and I'm so grateful to be um, a part of ORS and a part of Team South Carolina. Um, today is indeed an amazing milestone. Um, we're announcing today that we've created internet access for 100,000 homes in South Carolina, and it's happened in, in one year since we opened the broadband office. So it's pretty amazing. I'll talk about the maps in a minute. But uh, when you think about it happening in one year, I want to be clear to say this was certainly not an overnight success. Um, Jeff Bezos Appley says all overnight success takes about 10 years, and I think this is clearly one of those uh, situations. As Director Edwards mentioned earlier, prior to me coming to ORS, she had she'd been leading a team that had been working on public policy issues to shape and create the broadband office because it didn't exist. And, um, you know, kind of we had come in contact with ORS and I had been working separately um, as a private sector person working on the maps. And um, I want to thank the South Carolina Office of Rural Health Palmetto Care Connections and um, the South Carolina Hospital Association because they created the funding for the first set of countywide maps that was actually done in 2019. And with our success, uh, Congressman Clyburn, as he mentioned, invited, invited our team to come to DC and show off the work we've been doing. And that prompted map set number two, which really was the South Carolina Telecommunications and Broadband Association really came in with the second investment, and more importantly, they contributed data to the equation. 
so that our mapping work was no longer a year in reverse. We were now talking on current data. So those efforts really created the foundation for today's maps. And I want to share, I was sharing with the governor a little bit earlier how these maps work. And um, I'll try to keep it very simple. The, the green maps on top, they show you where we have internet access in the state of South Carolina. Simply stated, green is good. That's where we already have service and the residents have service. The white areas are where we have, um, really nobody lives there. That might be rural farmland or uh, forest area. And I tell everybody to find the freckles on the map. These are the places where we have a high density, high volume of homes and we need internet service. Um, and then the bottom part of the map, which is equally impressive, is where the technology is in the state. And the, the dark areas, the darkest areas, are where we have fiber. The blue areas are where we have cable, high-speed cable service. And the thing I want to draw your all attention to are the pink areas on the map. These are the things that, quite honestly, keep me up at night because these are the places where we do not have an Internet service provider available. This is not an affordability issue. This is a lack of infrastructure issue when you see those pink areas. So that's how you read the map. I want to do some shout outs to a um, variety of state agencies that have helped us. Um, Governor, you'll be heartened to know whenever we pick up the phone and call and ask for help, state agencies are bending over backwards to help us. Um, South Carolina Department of Education has given us the street addresses of every public school student. We're able to map that and inform our maps. Uh, Revenue and Fiscal Affairs has contributed E911 data so we can get the maps more precise. South Carolina De Department of Motor Vehicles has also contributed um, driver's license addresses and ID card holder addresses so we can get the maps more accurate. And finally, even South Carolina Department of Social Services has provided street addresses of all of those receiving public benefits, SNAP and TANF, so that we can make sure we prioritize areas and get those built more rapidly so we can help those in greatest need. Um, one of the major innovations of our maps, and we're one of the few states to do this, is we infuse our maps with consumer-generated speed tests. We partner with a company called Ookla. Um, some of you know about it, but these maps are actually rendered using over 9.7 million Ookla speed test uh, records, and that's how we verify the provider-reported data. So the FCC is provider-reported, the Euclid speed test data gives us our verification that we need to make sure that things were built properly. Um, as Director Edwards mentioned earlier, all of our maps, you all can find everything you want mapping wise on SC Digital Drive. We're in, uh, incredibly proud of that resource and we hope you all will visit and learn more about broadband in our state. Um, and you can also get high resolution versions of these maps can pull down as well as our annual report which we just published uh, yesterday. Making investments. I want to talk about our primary role in the broadband office is to make investments in internet service providers. Um, the broadband office, we don't put a single mile of fiber in the ground. We don't hire, we don't um, put a single mile of fiber on telephone poles. The ISPs do that work and we're incredibly grateful for their, their energy. Our job is really to make investments so that they can be successful and they can do what they do best. Um, there are about 30 internet service providers in the state of South Carolina. Um, they range in size from small family-owned companies all the way to the stadium naming brands. And we're incredibly grateful for all the work they do on a daily basis. So sincere thanks to the ISPs. Um, investing in the, from the broadband office really started um, in the middle of the pandemic. Um, I liken it. Uh, I, I joke with Nanette often, um, really got a battlefield promotion in the middle of the pandemic to take on the broadband office, and uh, it was courageous. Um, she's already talked about $50 million of CARES Act money, which was the first investment that the state ever made, and um, that provided 90,000 plus MiFi devices to students so they could do their homework, and it also provided the first ever investment into ISPs so that they could do what they do and expand broadband infrastructure. Um, in January of 2021, um, we formed a wonderful partnership with the South Carolina Department of Commerce and, um, and created what we call the Rural Broadband Grant Program. So to be clear, we were using commerce money, this is state money, to make the first really significant investment in, um, in, in broadband in the state. <coughs> Excuse me. And these maps really today are a tribute to that work. Um, 
because that's really what's coming. A lot of those projects are finishing up later this month, and that's really the, the propulsion for, for the maps. Um, I will say that all of the grants that we do are one-to-one -one match, and we want every citizen to know that it's not just state dollars that are making this happen. The, the Internet providers are matching those dollar for dollar um, as, they, as they pay out the money. And also, Congressman Clyburn has been so instrumental in making sure our federal agencies also have the ability to invest in broadband. So here in South Carolina, we've been great benefits of the Federal Communications Commission that has the ARDOF program, and also the U.S. Department of Agriculture, which also makes broadband investments, and probably many don't know that. So all in all, that's, that's what's propelling these maps, and we're incredibly grateful. Um, I'm going to wrap up quickly because I know you all have a lot of questions, but I want to thank um, Governor McMaster and Congressman Clyburn for all they do and for being here today to help us share this message. Um, I will say this just, just in closing. We know our job is not done. There's a lot of work to do. Um, providing Internet access, we call, is just the first step of the equation. To actually help residents and citizens sign up for service is what we call adoption. There's a lot of work to be done there. Internet service is expensive, and um, we're grateful that the, um, um, the federal government provides through the Affordable Connectivity Program a $30 a month subsidy to help low-income residents afford Internet service, so we're helping people sign up. Um, we are investing through the ARPA money. We think we'll be able to get thousands of more um, households connected to the Internet with ARPA. We've opened up a $180 million grant program, and we will be making those awards later this year. And all of this wonderful dialogue has prompted state agencies to think really creatively because um, we're working with Department of Transportation and also Rural Infrastructure to maximize state investment. And um, last but not least, we've got broadband community champions. Um, we've, we've created a program where we actually teach existing community leaders how to work in this broadband space. And I'm really super proud. We've trained existing community leaders in over 15 counties. Um, and over 15 broadband community champions have signed up to work. Nanette already mentioned our broadband advisory council. And in closing, I, I thank Director Edwards again for giving me my dream job. Um, and all of my colleagues, we have a wonderful team in the broadband office. You all will be so proud. Governor, thank you. And um, Congressman Clyburn, we'll back to you for some questions. Thank you. Uh, before we have questions, many of you have probably heard some words and descriptions of, of things that you have not had access to and not heard of before. <laughs> Well, that the, the whole point is that we, we want to, particularly the, the children, the young people in our state, to have access to things that they have not ac had access to before. But this is, we are making great progress in our state, and we should all be very proud of the, the way that, that we all work together uh, to make our state a, a, even a greater place to live, work, and raise a family. Congressman Clyburn, I've had the pleasure of working with Congressman Clyburn started off when I was in the Attorney General's office and he was instrumental in some of our programs there, everything that we asked for him. He delivered and he has certainly delivered on this and I will say if it weren't for Congressman Clyburn, we would not be here doing this today. So we have a great team. Jim has mentioned, Jim Stritzinger has mentioned a number of them and uh, th there are others, there, there are many people involved in this effort and I want to thank all of them but uh, the best is yet to come. We are. We're making great progress, but there's going to be much, much more. Does anyone have a question for anyone? Yes, so Senior correspondent, Sean Adcox. So we have 100,000. How many remain without access? What, how much money will that take to make up for that? And what is the timeline? We, we kind of knew this was coming. <laughs> so um, we started uh, in September of 2021 when we opened the broadband office. We had calculated that we had 221,000 households in South Carolina that needed help. We're announcing today that we've closed the gap considerably and taken and provided internet access for 100,000 homes. So some quick math would lead you to roughly 120,000 homes. The caveat there is the numbers are changing all the time. There's new houses being built. Um, our data is getting more precise as we move to uh, service address locations. So we're, we're rough guessing 125, 150,000 homes remain. 
Um, we're incredibly excited that the ARPA funding, um, the South Carolina General Assembly, I think as everybody knows, uh, committed $400 million. We are the first tranche of that, 180 million is currently um, open and we will be awarding those. And then we have a remaining, um, quite a bit of money remaining to do follow on projects. So um, I think we have, and then on the heels of that, so calendar year 2022 will be ARPA related investments, both uh, state and local fiscal recovery fund as well as capital projects fund. And then we move into calendar year 2024 we expect that the state will be receiving what are known as IIJA dollars, so the Investments in Infrastructure and Job Act. So we'll have a minimum of $500 million to work with, and we think we're going to make a, a big dent in the unserved homes in South Carolina. Well, to be clear, so the ARPA dollars have a hard time limit of December 2024. So we think we'll have, we know we'll have all of the money, all the 400 million will be deployed by December 31, 2024. And um, I'll caution everybody that two years of construction are on the heels of that. So the investment comes first and then we have to build it. But uh, I think we will, um, I think we'll hit the vast majority of homes We'll, we'll have investments to cover those by the end of 2024, and then 2026, the construction should complete. Anything else? Any more questions? Well, Shauna? Obviously, cities and counties have got their own money from the federal government. Have you found that they're also partnering? Has that helped speed this up at all? It has. And um, one of the challenges and opportunities with our map is to work in close coordination with the cities and counties that are also spending their own ARPA dollars on, on um, broadband money. So we are, our maps are closely aligned, so we're making sure, that's a key thing, is making sure we don't double invest. So if the counties are moving forward with their money, we will not put our money in the same place. How much has all the money from the federal government accelerated this? What would that timeline be looking like without it? Oh my gosh, well, it's not just federal money, it's private sector money. I mean, if... If I was to be shocked by anything, it's the rate of private investment that's happened in South Carolina in the last year. But the federal government's been huge. Um, both the FCC and RDOF have kicked um, millions of dollars into broadband and then, of course, the state money as well. So it, it, this is really a reflection on everybody working together. It's truly been Team South Carolina um, making this map happen. It's magic. <laughs> no, um, all, all seriousness, um, that's a great observation. This is a challenging, the economics nationally are challenging, right? All, all 50 states are doing this, plus the U.S. territories at the same time. And our job is to make the construction trucks stay on the South Carolina side of the fence. <laughs> and we're doing a good job of that. We're creating um, a a healthy climate for them to do their work and we're good at doing what we do and we help them move more efficiently. So really by mapping, it, it, it makes everybody's jobs easier because we're not stepping on each other's toes on the dance floor, so. You mentioned the paint areas being, you know, cause for concern for you personally. Yeah. What are some of the reasons why the areas that are paint are that color and what are some of the regions that you guys are primarily focused on? So um, the General Assembly gave us our marching orders and um, we are prioritizing census blocks that have a lot of K-12 students or they're what are known as difficult development areas. So U.S. Housing and Urban Development categorizes things. And also we're, we're prioritizing for our ARPA money places where there's no internet service provider. So those are our three conditions. So um, we've built an eligibility map where we, we coach, um, you know, it's an open grant program, but we coach the ISPs by lighting up the priority areas so they go there first. So that's how we're attacking it in a very creative way. And you mentioned students during the pandemic kind of being left behind. What are other ways that these communities without internet are kind of struggling behind communities that do have internet? Well, of course it's infrastructure, but then the next step is teaching those residents how to use it. Um, we have to lift up the citizens of South Carolina because their technical skills, I mean, if you've lived in an area that's never had internet before, you're starting 
way behind. So I know I personally had 20 years to get up to speed to go from email to really sophisticated stuff, but we want to condense that time frame, and that's where the broadband community champions and others come in because once we get the infrastructure in place, then we can put some muscle behind you know, the digital equity, digital literacy programs. Um, we have some wonderful nonprofits that are teaching senior citizens how to do telehealth, um, as an example, which is great. Um, that's been phenomenal on the statistics. We track that on a monthly basis and record it. You can go to SC Digital Drive and you can see the uh, rate of subscription on ACP program, not only at the state level, but the county level. But uh, it's been very successful and we have a lot of work to do. I won't kid you. Um, that's one of the things I've promised Congressman Clyburn when we would do is, is work hard on that in South Carolina. But it's, it's a really nice subsidy and it really helps people afford it when they need it most. Uh, candidly, um, the average cost for internet varies, and it's it's hard to see that because oftentimes it's bundled together with television and and uh, uh, telephone service. So getting internet service by itself is is hard, but um, we're trying to make it as affordable as possible. So um, reading between the lines, if we have a thirty dollar subsidy, bringing the monthly cost for internet as close to thirty as possible um, is really where the affordability guideline comes in. Two more on-topic questions, if you have. When you're improving the technology, are we talking about turning these pink areas golden or turning them blue or that's a, golden areas blue? How do you prioritize that? That's a fabulous question. So the federal government requires that all new infrastructure be built to a new federal standard of 100 megabits per second down, 20 up. So really, these areas that have nothing are leapfrogging. They're not. They're not going step by step by step. They are leapfrogging. Many are going straight away to fiber infrastructure, which will equip them um, well for the future. Yes, exactly. Yes. Well, as, as you know, we. We have a great team of people who have worked together. We've got great citizens, 5.2 million, who listen to the, to the broadcast and the information to, to stay safe. The hurricane was not nearly as bad as it could have been, but it, it was pretty bad in, in some places, particularly from Georgetown on up. But uh, the whole team was on the, on the field from the National Guard to the Department of Transportation and all the county and city offices and the mayors and everyone. And uh, we we're now are, are, are cleaning up and the roads should be cleared. I, I'm informed from, uh, from Christy Hall at the Department of Transportation that maybe one more day in getting the, the sand off, off of the roads, they're taking, uh, having to remove and, and suck sand out of uh, drainage pipes in those those beaches along that that area but uh, we're doing very well now there are a lot of people who who lost some possessions had water if their homes were low but we we saw we didn't see any in in, in my uh, examination of the area from, from the air and a little bit on foot we didn't see any homes that were destroyed saw some with some damage saw some docks a lot of the sand dunes that were, were in, in front of the houses on the beaches that I described are now behind the, the houses and in the roads, and that's what the, high, the Department of Transportation is trying to remove. It'd be up to the people themselves to see about the sand in their own yards. But we're, we're recovering uh, very well, and uh, it's, uh, we are delighted that we were able to work together, be prepared, be informed, and that the storm did not come in any stronger than it did. Thank you, everyone. Tom.